Good afternoon. Welcome to Paul Meal Talks. Today, we're going to be talking about warnings from your uh, muse. I, I got this idea from these these videos that's been going around of the uh, the the Hasidic tunnels in Brooklyn. <laughs> this is hilarious. All right, so we see that. We know the story of the tunnels. If you don't, you can Google it. Uh, there is a school, and uh, these Hasidic Jews dug a tunnel, and they come out of the tunnel and look hilarious. So this guy, Illuminati bot, who puts up a lot of really interesting stuff sometimes, I uh, put up this million views. Uh, this, this statue of a reptile dragging a child into a sewer is located in Brooklyn, New York, the same borough where the underground tunnels under a synagogue were found. Wow. Million views. I first saw this. I thought, wow, that is a really bizarre piece of sculpture. Who would make something of a child uh, with an alligator in a sewer pulling him back in like from the movie It? It even says New York City sewer across the top. And somebody commented about the bag on the head. I'm like, that is a pretty weird looking bag on the head of the kid there. So I, I looked a little closer and it's, it turns out it's not actually a kid. So I found the name of the artist and uh, th these are actually look like bankers. They're wearing suits and their heads are actually sacks of money with a dollar sign. I don't know if you can make that out. There's a dollar sign there in the face instead of a face. And this is a, probably it's a, uh, a cast so it's probably from the same mold, I'm assuming, right? Anyways, uh, so this got me thinking about the interpretations of, of the artist and of all the people making false interpretations. And are these actually false interpretations? So I started thinking about um, how that actually works. And if you look at sculptures and writing and paintings... In, in art, any form of art in general, uh, it, it appears the artists are trying to warn us or communicate an idea to us. Maybe, you know, they're warning us about, you know, in the future about something that they're trying to, you know, they're using a metaphor. Here's a metaphor of something. Here's a warning. Sometimes it's uh, explicit. Sometimes it's on the nose. Sometimes, they, you know, they really, here's a warning to people from the future, right? Or, or it could be a more of a meta and, uh, of the, uh, of the, uh, of a of a warning or a message or whatever, right? Sometimes it's just agit prop, which is you know agitation propaganda, and sometimes it's just plain wrong, right? And sometimes there's there's no intended message at all, but we perceive sometimes a metaphor and infer a warning or perhaps a message in the art. So this is of course you know something we might immediately assume to be a false interpretation. Right, so you see this song and you, oh, I get this message from the song, right? You could say it's a false interpretation of the song. It's a form of apophenia. The songwriter did not actually interpret or, or mean for you to interpret what you interpreted, right? You, you're seeing a meaningful connection when there is, in fact, none, right? This is a common uh, knee-jerk uh, reaction, but having said that, we equally need to be uh, equally need to be on the lookout for uh, apophenia type two, which is being blind to uh, and not seeing a meaningful connection when there actually is one. Now, is this is there a meaning uh, from the artist, or is there a meaning from somewhere else? Right. So perhaps our subconscious is always trying to communicate with us. You know, it, perhaps it needs a trigger or, or maybe this is a flaw in our, our minds. Who knows? But maybe we need a trigger. Maybe we need a muse, right? I don't know if you're familiar with the, the Greek muses, right? They were, I think they were gods or something that, you know, uh, whispered into the ears or inspired artists to come up with ideas and music and songs and writing and philosophy and whatever, right? So a muse, you've heard of muses. I'm not going to belabor it, even though I am sort of like Phil Dunphy, 
I'll keep this message short because that's what I like people to do. Ha! Anyways, our minds are uh, highly complex machines. And assuming evolution is generally correct, then we can infer our foibles of reasoning are not entirely foibles. If foibles is even a word. <laughs> All right, perhaps those billions of years of evolution have, uh, have given us valid tools that we should not be so quick to discard, you know, all that, that hard won schemata, the, the hard won mode of reasoning or, or concepts that we've come up with instinctively through our DNA, not learned, but we've learned through evolution, not learned since our birth. So what could this mean then? Our interpreting uh, a warning message or meaning in art when the artist had no message, no such message uh, intended. You know, often we hear songwriters talk about how varied people's interpretations of their lyrics are by fans. And, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. You know, those people uh, interpreted meaning for themselves from the song or from whatever, right? Now, I'm not talking about some, you know, their truth bullshit, you know, but an actual objective truth or, or perhaps a, a feeling or a taste, a judgment, a nudge, uh, a bias, whatever. It's not wrong, but it can be. And it also can be right. It boils down to our judgment. Art can be a, a catalyst which stimulates our minds to push something to the surface that we've been cooking in our back burners that this, you know, uh, yeah, in our back burners. So at, at that point, when something bubbles to the surface, we need to put that thought against uh, that epiphany against our uh, critical judgment. You know, could, could this new boiled up uh, epiphany that was triggered by the muses or by a song or by whatever art is this idea that we just springs to our mind is, could this be wrong? Right. Uh, uh, could it, is, is it a logical fallacy? Uh, you know, it, it's, it's not the painting or the song or the sculpture or the book or the poem or the movie or whatever itself that's giving us the message. It's that art, uh, can flick our mental bick and perhaps trigger a memory or a thought that we've yet to complete and, and brings it to the surface. It may seem like this is a new idea that comes to the surface, or maybe not. We kind of like, oh, yeah, I've been thinking about that for a while. I kind of, I've been thinking about that, right? Anyways, we, we, don't, we don't even need man-made art for this to occur. You know, we can see it in trees and clouds and, and bushes, and, and they aren't just animals, but these can be complex con uh, concepts. And we've evolved this trait, presumably, for a reason. When we go for a hike in the woods, you know, these little flicks from the complex, apparent chaos of Mother Nature absolutely helps us think and bring new ideas to the front of our consciousness. Like fish, we can choose to pay attention and keep them, or we can let them go back into the sea of conscious consciousness from whence it came. <laughs> Maybe I'm having a stroke. The sea of consciousness. Uh, we interpret patterns uh, from the apparent noise and some imbeciles in the soft sciences, uh, which should be called the pseudosciences because... Soft sciences are not actual science. Those imbeciles uh, may call this error in cognition if we de detect signal in noise because they are imbeciles <laughs> and, and are in the soft sciences. And soft sciences get their name because people are soft in the head who pretend to do uh, that science. So uh, these same fools will argue the, the Rorschach test is valid because the images that we interpret from random noise of uh, an ink blot is valuable information to these quacks for them to interpret, which is, of course, 
the very cognitive error of apophenia <laughs> that they are using to interpret what we see. So our interpretation, they interpret as, as valuable, but it, that is actually an apophenic interpretation of what we're interpreting. <laughs> their, uh, their apophenia, uh, their apophenic interpretations are coming from the noise of someone else's interpretation. And for them, it's magically not apophenia when they do it. So Freud was bad for this, right? Uh, and Freud was, of course, a, a, an absolute idiot. So which is it? Either the signal we perceive from noise is an error or it can have valid meaning. It's not to say that it always has valid meaning, but it can have valid meaning. And of course it does, right? Or it can. So long as we check this signal or this message we receive from the noise as having any valid meaning and recognize that it may be wrong, but it may also lead us to fresh, new, valid insights as to what is important to us as individuals. The evil, nihilistic, uh, centralist, collective types uh, always try to minimize the value of the individual and try to make people feel that they are nothing special. If there is a Satan or some great evil in the realm of consciousness, this would absolutely be its position. <laughs> when, of course, the exact opposite is true. Everyone is special. Every conscious human who is experiencing existence is infinitely special, simply for existing. So it's no wonder that the collectivist evil will try to condition evils or individuals that their uh, Freudian slip there, right? Uh, that the uh, they'll try to condition individuals to think that their interpretations or ideas triggered by the muses are nothing special and should be let go back to the data stream of consciousness. They try to reframe our perspectives of reality to some dark nihilistic hellhole. Most artists themselves don't even understand where their inspirations come from, where the the signal from the muse is coming from. Some have crazy new world or a cult, occult type hypotheses, and some just ignore it. They don't know, they don't care, they just create it. So uh, name drop warning. I once had lunch with a fairly famous singer from the 70s and 80s. He was a songwriter, or is a songwriter, Ian Thomas. His brother is the comedian Dave Thomas from Bob and Doug McKenzie fame, which nobody under 40 perhaps even 50, uh, would know who these guys are, right? So anyways, Ian tried to explain to me where he thinks his music comes from. And as far as I can recall, it comes from some infinity loop, uh, a tangent to it that uh, I have no idea. It doesn't matter. What matters is uh, for Ian that he found a muse that he can plug into and receive triggers or perhaps the signal uh, for his songs himself. So uh, I got to give a disclaimer here. Just because I met with Ian a few times doesn't mean that he is in any way affiliated or agrees with anything that I say. <laughs> right. Which brings me to the concept of concepts or schema, the idea of ideas, right? Uh, in the abstract, a concept may not be black or white. We may assume then that it is uh, a gray or on the gray scale, a gradient between black and white. But there are other possibilities. It could be black and white. But how could that be? This sounds like some ancient Chinese bullshit. It is both black and white. Or the concept might be more complicated than monochrome monolith of sameness. It could be blotchy, like a Dalmatian, or like a, a black and white cow, or one of those black and white seabirds. I'm not sure if they're ducks or terns, whatever. We could carry the metaphor into more dimensions, including you think like tie dye, you know, or uh, the concept of color itself, right? A concept like uh, a shade of color may appear very simple and monochrome, monochromatic, but a single color can be a mixture of many other colors, while light itself may appear boring, but 
of course, you know, we is, it is made up of the full spectrum of all the colors that we can see. Which brings me to the point of this discourse, which is our consciousness sensing a signal from reality, our interpretation or, or getting valuable information from it. We all know about the common senses, sight, hearing, smell, taste, touch, balance, up, down, mood of others. <laughs> we can sense that, right? But if you think of our evolution, if, if that is how we came about, if, if we actually evolved, which probably, right? Or we were created by aliens or gods or who knows what. But if we're going with the, the um, evolution hypothesis, uh, at one point our ancestors did not see. We did not have vision. We did not have eyeballs. But presumably they started to sense this weird abstract concept called light. And the ones who sensed light better presumably had better uh, a better chance of evading being eaten or perhaps a better chance of finding food. And we eventually evolved uh, the complex machinery of vision, not just eyeballs uh, with lenses and muscles and cones and rods, but the optic nerves, the hardware and the software to interpret that signal from reality, which we simply call light or sight, not light, sight of light. <laughs> it's so simple, right? Uh, the same thing must have happened with hearing. We at first started sensing air pressure uh, changes and uh, and it led to the advantage of some kind after millions of years of, of developing, uh, uh, we eventually developed hearing. Same with taste, touch, and all, all the other senses. I assume touch would probably be one of the first senses, but I'm just guessing. And since evolution is not a final destination, but a process, we have to assume that we are not a final product, but just a portion in the, in the stream, uh, which means there may be other data coming from reality that we just barely are aware of and are now in the process of developing a new sense organ to perceive. What it is, even if I knew, I wouldn't be able to explain any better than trying to explain the color red to someone who was born blind. Logically, we should not be quick to uh, disregard people who claim to sense things that we do not understand. Yes, they could be experiencing apophenia, uh, or we might be falsely interpreting that we are. But they could be sensing something that we could only in our quietest moments perceive, or perhaps when we were walking in the woods and the muse triggers it for us. We have enough trouble accurately interpreting explicit signals from other humans when they speak or try to communicate with us by what other, whatever mode, uh, writing, whatever, visual, just body language even. We may think that we are very accurate, but that hubris is of course false. Remember this when you hear journalists, politicians, or any expert spew their goo. There may be more than uh, just one new sense organ evolving in our, in our human body. <laughs> right? There could be two, or there could be ten. Who knows? Perhaps we will fork in our evolution, and one branch will continue to develop sense X, where another branch will develop sense Y. Or perhaps one will develop since X, Y. I don't know. But I do know that we won't develop anything if the evil globalists are successful with their population uh, control agenda. Do not trust the World Health Organization. And don't assume others properly interpret what is happening. <laughs> to summarize, we interpret things, we may interpret them wrong. Uh, yeah, we interpret things and we may interpret them wrong. Uh, we need to study logical fallacies and compare our interpretations against them. No one gets everything right. Not us, not politicians or doctors. All right, I'm getting a phone call, so I have to wrap this up. That is sufficient. Comment below if you agree or not. Share this with all your idiot friends and family and watch or listen to the rest of my discourses.